Hey everyone! Today I'm reading Chameleon Chameleon by Joy Cowley and photographs by Nick Bishop. Okay, and while I'm reading the story, I want you to think a lot about why the chameleon does what he does. And you're going to learn a lot of interesting facts about the chameleon, and you're going to learn about a lot of the unique things that he does that other animals don't do. Okay, so let's dive right in. Chameleon Chameleon by Joy Cowley, illustrated by Nick Bishop, and he did photography today, so he used a camera to take pictures. This is my table of contents, and it tells me what different parts are in my book. Okay, let's begin. Oh, there go those pages. The chameleon rests in his tree. His skin has peaceful colors. What peaceful colors do you see on his skin? I see some light blues, some greens. I see a little yellows, maybe some golden, maybe some orange in there. He wakes up hungry for a juicy insect. He looks this way and he looks that way. No food, no food. He must find a new tree home. And if you look, he still has those peaceful greens and blues. And you can see our sight word no in the yellow. Slowly, the chameleon climbs down the tree step by step. There's our chameleon walking on the branches. He stops. Is something hiding in the tree? A gecko. The gecko looks scary, but it will not hurt the chameleon. Here's the gecko. And if you look closely at the gecko, you can see how he looks different than the chameleon. He has different colors. Step by step, the chameleon creeps to the ground. He looks this way and he looks that way, watching always for danger. What is this? It's a tiny chameleon. It's not dangerous. Look, there's a little baby chameleon. What colors do you see on that chameleon? Good, some like brown, tan colors. Excellent. What is that? It's a tiny frog. The frog will not harm him either. So, so far our chameleon is looking this way and that way, being very careful to not have any animals near him that could harm him. Something hangs from a low branch. Suddenly it jumps. Another gecko. The gecko will not hurt the chameleon. The chameleon moves on. And this gecko kind of looks like a brown leaf a little bit. I bet that protects him from any animals that might hurt him. What is this? A scorpion. Watch out, chameleon. The scorpion's stinger is poisonous. Poisonous means that if our chameleon got stung by this stinger, he would get sick and die. So I'll zoom in on our little scorpion and his little stinger. Carefully, the chameleon creeps past. At last, the chameleon finds a new tree. He's safe again. He climbs up slowly, step by step by step. And if you look at our chameleon, his colors have changed a little bit. He's got some black and dark blue in there and his green looks a little darker. He doesn't look as peaceful or happy or as calm as he did in, as he was in the beginning of the story, does he? Is there food in the tree? Yes. The chameleon sees a big caterpillar over here. You see it? Our poor chameleon's been searching all day for food. I bet he's hungry. Zap! Look what he used to catch the caterpillar, his tongue. And chameleons have unique tongues because on the end it's like a little suction cup. And it's really long. It's a lot longer than our tongue. 
Choo, choo, gulp. Something is watching. Another chameleon lives in this tree. Her skin is dark with angry colors. Go away, she says. Let's look at her dark colors. She's got some browns and blacks. And she does not want our chameleon in her tree. But the chameleon greets her with bright colors. She sees that he is friendly and she welcomes him with pale colors. So look, her colors changed before she was brown and dark colors because she was angry. Now she's white, a little bit of gray, a little bit of yellow. She's feeling peaceful and calm. Two chameleon friends have happy colors. Okay, that's the end of the story part. Before I read you the next part, I want to ask you some questions. So in our story, our chameleon is constantly, the whole story, searching for something. And what is he searching for? Good food. He's hungry. And he has to travel from place to place, from tree to tree, from the ground up into the tree to find some food. And what does he finally find? What kind of food at the end of the story? Good. A caterpillar. He finds a caterpillar at the end. Okay, and our chameleon, every time he goes from one place to the other to get some food, he's always looking that way and that way. And what is he looking for? Good, he's looking for an animal that could hurt him. Okay, so in the back of our chameleon chameleon book, it has a little bit of information for us because it is a nonfiction book. That means it's about something that's real life and something that happens in real life. And another way I know it's nonfiction is these are real pictures taken by from a camera. Okay, so we talked about what our chameleon was looking for every time that he was turning this way and that way. And he was looking for an animal that could hurt him. Okay, we looked in our story and we learned that chameleons, one thing that's special about them that doesn't happen to other animals, is that their skin can change colors based upon how they're feeling. So if they're calm, they're calm colors. If they're angry, they're angry colors. Okay. How would that help them survive in the wild, their colors being able to change? Okay. Think about it. Okay. You can tell someone at home. Now, their colors help them survive because that's one of the ways that chameleons can communicate with each other. One chameleon can look at another chameleon and see how that chameleon is feeling. It also depends on where the chameleon lives, but sometimes their colors can help them blend or camouflage, which means hide from predators in their environment. So on this page, it has a lot of information about chameleons. So I'm just gonna read a little bit of it in case you're interested. Okay. Chameleons can come in as many in many sizes, from as large as a squirrel, so probably like this big, to as small as a matchstick, which is probably about this big. Male chameleons are long. They are about 15 inches long. So it's probably about this big, hard for you to see. And female chameleons are about this long. They're always very cautious and move slowly, taking one careful step at a time. Most live in trees where they can hide among the leaves. They have feet like pinchers and long tails to hold onto branches. When a chameleon spots its favorite food, such as a fly, a grasshopper, or a caterpillar, it creeps close, then suddenly spits out its long tongue. Muscles at the tip of the tongue grab the insect as it zipped back into the chameleon's mouth. A chameleon always likes to stay safe and it usually avoids others of its kind, but sometimes it will climb down from its tree to look for one with more insects to eat or to look for a mate. On the ground, it is no longer well hidden, so it stays on the lookout for forest floor animals. Some, like snakes and scorpions, could be dangerous. Others, like geckos, are harmless. Chameleons are well known for being able to change color. People once thought they did this to match their surroundings, but only a few types of chameleons clearly change color, and they do it depending on their mood. For example, a chameleon's colors might darken when it is cold or upset, or they may brighten when it goes to sleep. Mostly chameleons change color when they see each other. 
males turn bright colors to impress females or to scare off other males. Chameleons cannot hear sounds very well, so they use color as a way to talk to each other. So one thing I did not know before I read this book, so one thing this book taught me, is that chameleons use their colors to communicate with each other. People, like us, we can talk to each other. That's how we communicate. Chameleons cannot talk, so they use their colors to show how they feel. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. That is the end of Chameleon Chameleon by Joe Cowley and photographs by Nick Bishop. I hope you enjoyed. Bye!